All right, good morning. This is a 2014 C7 Corvette. We're gonna be changing the shifter in this car, mostly the shifter handle. This car has already has the Henson short throw shifter in it. Uh, so we'll work through the disassembly of the interior quickly. The purpose here will be to show you how the plastics come apart. Uh, we will point out how to change the shifter. Uh, we won't actually change it since it already has ours in this, but we'll make sure you have all the information you need uh, to be able to install your own. So with this car, we'll start with opening the center console. We'll be removing the, uh, the Torx bits, Torx screws that are in the center. Uh, these are Torx 15s. Uh, there's a small retainer clip that uh, holds it in, so even after you get the screws in place, it, it won't fall off. You'll have to sort of pop it off. Uh, we'll do that We're super fast. So. And now it's free. This is the little retaining clip right here that I'm referring to. So we'll set this off to the side. The next piece we're going to remove is the side of the center console right here. Um, you need to start at the back, pop it off, uh, and work its way for, work your way forward. It has a little retaining clips all the way on. The, the front of the part has a um, has a has a clip where when you pop the back off, you need to be able to push the part forward to get it to release free. If you pull it from the front, you will break that plastic clip up front. So no mystery here, we'll just put our fingers in behind, pop this loose, and voila, we're done. This is the plastic clip I'm telling you about. Uh, if you pull from the front, you'll break that You'll break that retainer off. We'll just set this to the back for now. This car was temporarily installed with our C5 threaded handle and a C5 knob for prototype testing. Um, that's, of course, the reason why we're, we're removing it today. Um, if you had the factory uh, shifter in your car, which you probably do if you're watching this video. The aluminum collar, you would need to grab it firmly with two hands and twist it uh, about a quarter turn and that'll release it from the factory uh, from the factory shift boot. Um, you'll see that in a moment when we put the factory uh, knob back on on this car. It, it, if it's never been off, it, it's a very high effort. Um, if you don't have the biggest, strongest hands in the world, you may have to use a, uh, a pair of pliers to, uh, to get enough leverage to turn it. Um, in this case, since we're not having to deal with that, uh, we're just gonna take the factory knob off, I mean the, the C5 knob that we had on this car off. Um, when you are taking your factory shift boot loose, there is going to be a Torx screw behind that. I believe it's a 25, and you'll take that one loose uh, at that time. Again, this was a temporary installation for prototyping on this particular car. So, um, now that that's free, and assuming you've got your factory boot loose and the, the there's a and the torque screw from the side of the shift knob, your factory shift knob with that torque, with that screw removed will just slide straight off the top. Um, all right, so. Now with the shift ball, shift ball loose and out of the way, we're uh, going to take the, the rear cover off. This plastic clip just holds on with, box cover holds on with two retaining clips. It's a 10 millimeter nut that holds on the, holds the back of these. You'll simply uh, use your quarter drive tool or tool of your choice to take the hex 10 millimeters off. It's, uh... All right, so with the rear hex 10 millimeter nuts removed, we'll go ahead and pop up the center console here. This is held in by some retaining clips. It has enough clips that it takes a decent amount of effort to pop it up the first time. Um, just make sure you're lifting straight up when you, um, at the very front of the panel, if you could show down here, you'll see that this, this right here is just clipped on. It's probably easier just go ahead and take it off. It'll, that way you'll keep from scratching up any of the plastics as you pop the center console free. So at this point, I've already popped the, the rear loose. We're just gonna pull the front like this. I have the shifter in the fourth position right now so that it gives us the most clearance. As you pull this up, you'll notice your wiring that's on the bottom. Uh, everything, you can't put the wiring back in the wrong place again, so don't sweat, uh, don't sweat necessarily marking it, but take a good middle image of where all your connections are. With the clip up, excuse me, with the um, plastics up, you'll go ahead and unplug basically all your connections for your trash control, your parking brake, cigarette lighter, etc you will need to take loose the uh, center console. For us to change the handle today, we're, we don't have to do all this, uh, but we'll take it the rest of the way so that you guys can see what's going on. Um, finally, at the front, you've got the cigarette lighter that needs to be removed. Uh, we just need to be careful not to ding up any plastics while you're there. All right, so with all the electrical connections unplugged, remember you've got your cigarette lighter at the front. 
uh, parking parking brake control, traction control, etc. All this will just pop free and and uh, you can see the bottom of it. Everything will go back in place. I'm just gonna set this out of the way for now. All right. So looking inside, we've got the now. In order to do a shifter install, this lower panel needs to plastic panel needs to come out. You have a hex 10 millimeter, hex 10 millimeter, two hex 10 millimeters in the back, and you've got another one up here. Um, I'm just going to zip these loose real quick and then we'll take the electrical connections off next. So. When removing the center console, you'll have to unplug the part of the uh, excuse me the electrical port, USB data port here, and this unplug here. Just note that this wire routes underneath the plastic tray. If you route it over the top when you're putting it back together, then your cup holder uh, will interfere with that with the reinstallation. So. Okay, so again, in this C7, we already have our shifter in the car with the C5 handle. I'm going to walk you through real quick the, the process of getting down to the shifter bay so you can do your own install. In this car, we used a zip tie to help seal the center console. You just want to be careful. Um, when you do this, it just helps keep uh, heat, out of the, heat out of the car. All right, so in this case, we have the two front ten, hex millimeter, uh, 10 millimeters out, the two center ones, and the two rear ones. So at this point, the plastic piece will just pick up and come back, especially if I had unplugged this. So this will allow it to move. Okay. And this just pops down with a uh, simple plug like this. So this will come free and will be slid to the back. Okay. All right, so with the lower center console base out of the way, I'll just pick up and slide out. Uh, we'll take the top Heat top rubber boot out. Let's see here. Okay. And then the lower boot is held on by the 10 millimeter uh, nuts as well. So we'll remove those. So with the four hex nuts removed, this lower plate will simply lift off. Now you can see the Henson C7 short throw shifter installed. In your car, the factory shifter, you'll have uh, 10 millimeter hex um, bolts holding it in place, uh, four total. Uh, you'll remove those four, and the when you do that, the factory shifter will pop right off. Um, the Henson shifter is symmetrical. Uh, the decal can be on the front or the back. Uh, we like putting it where you can see it. Um, when you go to install this one, there will be some gasket material, potentially some gasket material remaining on the shifter box. Um, we don't, uh, if, just make sure you have a clean mounting surface there. Uh, some of you may be wondering why we don't change the actual shift box itself that's mounted to the torque tube. There's no mechanical advantage in doing so. And also we don't have to worry about realignment by uh, with changing unnecessary parts. So with the factory shifter, uh, shifter 10 millimeter bolts removed, the shifter will pull straight up. The Henson shifter will fall right back in its place using the provided hardware uh, that uh, you'll use for, for install. At that point, you can, um, at that point, we can resume the center console reinstallation. Uh, in this case, since I'm changing the shifter on this uh, shifter handle, I've already loosened these a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and remove this and so after you've removed the factory shifter and reinstalled the Henson C7 short throw shifter with the provided hardware, you'll simply install the, uh, the factory boot back over the top. It will have some uh, tension on it uh, in, order to, um, in order to help seal out the center console. You'll you, again reuse all your existing hardware, tight, tighten this down in place. After you've tightened this down, you'll install the secondary boot as well. All right, the, with the heat boot installed, the factory boot goes back over the top. Again, I'll, you'll wanna make sure you use both of these. 
These are designed to help keep heat out of the center console. So. Alright, so with that in place, we're going to install our, our new handle. Alright, so the factory C7 shifter and C6 shifter are, are basically the same units. They're interchangeable. You'll see that we modeled our handle to work after the factory handle. This allows you to use the factory shift knob or the uh, or a Henson Motorsports uh, specific round ball. Some people have a personal preference of round versus factory. Uh, our, the Henson balls will be available in black or white with the six or seven speed shift pattern on the top and the Henson Motorsports logo on the side. Uh, these handles are made of uh, a heavy a weighted steel so you don't have to worry about um, smooth transitions from gear to gear. It maintains the same relief for the uh, shift ball at the top. These are powder coated here uh, and also you'll have the retaining screw for the factory um, for the factory shift knob itself. So this install is just like the factory one would. Uh, there isn't a wrong side left or right side here. Uh, my personal preference is that we is that we offset it to the driver side. So that's the side of the shifter that we're going on today. Alright, so with these, sometimes people will run into a uh, shifter vibration or a buzzing. Uh, this is a heavy duty uh, bolt with a solid handle and a solid shift stub. Um, you'll want to make sure you torque these down uh, substantially. If you're ever driving down the road and you're feeling a vibration or a buzz, it's probably because you did not torque these enough. A small amount of small amount of thread locker would not be a bad idea. You don't want to get crazy with it because there may be a day you need to change the handle. So, All right. So at this point, just to illustrate how the factory knob works, uh, this is the C7 knob, 7-speed pattern. It slides directly over. Nut goes on the top. Short throw. Okay. All right, so we're going to finish putting the center console back together. We'll do this uh, to illustrate how it's done, and we'll be ready to rock and roll. So the center console comes back together the same way it was removed. You've got the alignment dowels that you need to put in place. You will make sure that your wiring harness is going underneath the center here, and you can, you'll can you sit down in place. You'll have the two, two bolts up front, two studs here, two studs in the rear, the, of course, the did, you did this five minutes ago, so you still remember where everything went. So we'll put this together real quick. Once we have all the nuts in place, we'll make our electrical connections, tighten this down, and move on. So as I tighten this up and I'm talking with you, I want to go ahead and point out the fact that the factory boot is very tight around the, the Henson Short Throw shifter and the handle that we've provided. Um, I like for a little added security to run a zip tie. Ideally, get a black one because the plastics are black, but... Once you've installed this, no one will know the difference. Um, what you'll do is just tighten this down. This helps keep any heat out of the, any additional uh, heat out of the center console and just makes for a more pleasant driving experience. So as you tighten this, of course, good zip tie manners would be to trim the excess. Okay. All right, so we'll plug this in and we'll be right back with you. All right, so now we've got the bolts installed at the front, the two hex nuts, the middle and in the rear, the uh, all the electrical connections have been re-plugged re in and set again, including the USB port on the side. Um, the next step is going to be to install the center console again, um, or the top of the center console. Uh, when doing this, you want to make sure you plug in the cigarette lighter first. It's going to be the more challenging one. When doing this for the first time, don't be afraid to get your buddy to sit in the car with you and hold plastic so you can use two hands to get clips moved and free. But this will sit in place just like so. Get everything lined up. You'll see the shifter will pop in. Uh, we'll go ahead and plug in our traction control mode, parking brake. And you probably notice I already had the rear, uh, let, rear power port plugged in. So. Everything should sit back in place. You want to make sure all of your clips are lined up so you don't break anything off. You'll have to apply a little bit of forward pressure to get it to pop in. And then once everything's lined up, just put it back in place. A little, little love tap usually is what, is what it takes to do so. 
Now we'll install the side panel again. And you'll recall that this one does have the retention clip on the front. So it'll go in first, of course. Get that lined up up here. Once it's in, you'll slide it forward a small amount. And it lines everything up. All right. If you were... If you did remove this earlier, don't forget to stick it back in, otherwise you'll have a, a gap in your plastic in your dash. So, all right. All right, so at this point, all we have to do is put the armrest back in using the torque screws that were provided. We'll go ahead and move on to the shifter itself. Now at this point, you'll install the shift knob itself, and just like you unscrewed at the original one, this one will screw up. There we go. And line that up, put it in place. Of course, you'll put your keeper screw in, in before you do that. And now you've got a short throw shifter with your factory knob. Keep in mind the Henson round knob option is available as well. If you have any questions, you can email us at uh, sales at hensonmotorsports.com or give us a call at 205-909-9402. Our website is hensonmotorsports.com and we appreciate the opportunity to work with you. All right, so the, you have the factory knob option uh, as well as the round ball option. This is one of our license balls with the Corvette logo. This is a C6 logo. We have a C7 logo as well as the Henson Motorsports one. Just want to point out that these are interchangeable and have the groove built into them for the, um, for the shift boot itself. All right, so with the round ball installed, whether it be the Henson ball, white, black, or one of our Corvette license balls, you'll have the option then to also keep the factory shift boot retainer so this won't vibrate. In either rate, factory ball, round ball, see how short the throw is. So we'll go ahead and install the factory knob for this car, and we'll shoot a quick, uh, shoot, shoot a quick video. Uh, when installing this, you have, make sure you retain the factory screw. This is what keeps the knob from coming off in your hand when you change gears.